All right, we're going to look at Newton's law of gravitation. Uh, last semester we used gravitational forces mg, uh, but this is only applicable near Earth's surface. Uh, now we're dealing with objects involved in planetary orbits. So we use the full law of gravitation, which I told you last semester is gm1 m2 over r squared. I recommend right this moment uh, take out your calculator. G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Uh, take out your calculator. Go 6.67 times 10 caret negative 11 and store that value as g. Then when it comes to your quiz or your test or whatever, you can just type g, and that'll save you a lot of time and writing and stuff. So, yeah. So that's our formula. Uh, nine. Uh, I have people think about it in class, but if the Earth exerts a force of F on the satellite, what's the magnitude of the force the satellite exerts on the Earth? It's F. Why? Newton's third law. Equal and opposite forces. Uh, this equation demonstrates the, that the gravitational force is proportional to 1 over r squared, uh, inverse square. So, you know, the Earth, the Moon exerbit, blah, 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 experiences gravitational force F from the Earth moon moves to so the Earth exerting force 2F on it, what would its new orbital radius be? So we're changing F. We want to see what happens to R. So when we do that, we want to rearrange this to solve for R. So that would get us that R squared equals G M1 M2 over F. And if R squared equals that, we take the square root. So we can see that R is proportional to 1 over square root of F. Uh, so then if we change it to 2F, then we get a factor of 2 under the root in the denominator so the R uh, becomes R over root 2. So the moon would move that much closer to, to Earth. Um, yes. Mass of Earth is that. Mass of the moon is that. They're that far apart with the magnitude of the force they exert on each other. This is just a matter of calculating. It's going to be 5 point, sorry, G times 5.97 times 10 to the 24th times 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd over 3.84 times 10 to the 8th. And when things are in scientific notation, people tend to forget for some reason. That still needs to be R squared, so don't forget to square that. Type it in. There is a button on your calculator that is your friend. It is the E button. 5.97 times 10 to the 24th, I can type 5.97 second, comma, it gives you this E, that means times 10 to the power of. Uh, I don't remember where that button is on the 89, so you'll have to find it. Yeah. If I type all that in, which I can do like that, I come up, comes out to... Uh, all these values have three sig figs, and we're just multiplying, so that's 1.98 times 10 to the 20th. Newtons. Earth exerts gravitational force of 250 newtons on a satellite with mass 220 grams. How far from Earth's surface is the satellite? Uh, this is Earth's surface. I didn't mention this. This R is the distance between the centers. of the object. So R, in this case, the force is 250, and that's equal to G times mass of Earth times mass of satellite over R squared. Well, that R is the distance from the center of the Earth. The question is how far from the Earth's surface is the satellite. So that's going to be the radius of the Earth plus whatever unknown value we want. And this x is going to be the, quest, the answer, how far from the Earth's surface is the satellite. So doing algebra, let's see, we would divide the 250, multiply this over here. 
So we'd have g times 5.97 e24 times 220. Then that would be divided by the force. We'd move that over. And that would equal this stuff squared. So we take the square root. And then we subtract 6370000. And we get that. How far from the Earth's surface are we? Well, it's about... Uh, what's the sig fig, actually? Uh, three sig figs. Yeah, it says three six six. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five zeros meters. Or you could write that in scientific notation. Uh, in fact, for this unit, it might not be a terrible idea. Your cal if you go mode psi, then whenever you do a calculation, your computer will your computer your calculator will give you a value in scientific notation. So that might not be a terrible thing. Um, when Newton first put forth his law of gravitation, uh, some people criticized him because uh, they, they thought it wasn't possible for a force to be exerted over a distance. That, and in saying that there was this force exerted when there was a distance between the objects, uh, they, they said occult forces, occult is like, like magic. Like you're saying, oh, it's magic. And so some people criticized Newton uh, for that. Uh, nowadays, scientists think of forces as being caused by fields. So there is a gravitational field that extends through all of space, and the gravitational field is what causes the force on a given mass. Uh, there's an electric field that causes the electric force, magnetic fields, etc. Uh, gravitational field is G. It's gravitational force over M or GM over R squared. Uh, just so you know. Uh, remember there's a distinction between mass and weight. Weight is gravitational force. Mass is the amount of matter in the object. Uh, so weight changes based on location. Mass does not change based on location. Yeah. So if I go to the moon, my weight becomes less, but my mass stays the same. Uh, tides are related to the gravitational field. Uh, the, the tides on Earth, you know, there are high tides, low tides, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm going to explain and draw a diagram explaining uh, why these occur, and you need to know how to explain the tides. Uh, that's, yeah. So the tides are a result of the gravitational from the field from the moon, uh, but they're a result of a difference in the gravitational field from the moon at different points. The tides are a result of the difference in the moon's gravitational field measured at different points on Earth. What does that look like? Okay, moon, Earth, right? And the Earth, as you know, has oceans. And oceans, you know, cover a majority of the Earth's surface. Uh, but, so we're not going to bother with, like, where the oceans are and stuff. So I'm just going to, like, let's assume that the Earth is a, you know, land surrounded by a ball of water uh, for our purposes. Now, let's think about moon's gravitational field at the surface of the Earth here versus at the center of the Earth here. Where will the gravitational field be stronger? Well, the gravitational field is gm over r squared. Right? So as R gets bigger, gravitational field gets smaller. So the moon's gravitational field is bigger at the point closer to the moon, smaller at the point farther away. So that means the moon pulls the water here at Earth's surface more strongly than it pulls the land, the mass that makes up the, the solid part of the Earth. So because it pulls the water more strongly, the water over here kind of bulges out away from the Earth's surface. Which creates a 
high tide. Now let us consider over here. Gravitational field on the Earth versus on the water that's over here. Well, the Earth will be pulled more strongly than the water over here, which pulls the, the land away from the surface of the water, which has the effect of making the water deeper over here as well. Because uh, the surface of the water is you know, somewhere, and it's not getting pulled as much as the land, so the land pulls away from it, which makes for deeper water there. So over here, it, the water kind of bulges outward as well uh, for a slightly different reason. And then because, so this is a, over here, we have another high tide. Uh, and then because the water is bulging out here, like that water is, has to come from somewhere, and it's because it's flowing, uh, you know, it's free to move. So the water flows from places over here. And so at these points, and this is because this is a sphere, this is really all along a circle here. Every point that's 90 degrees away from the highest tide, uh, those points have a have low tides. Uh, yeah, and because the Earth is rotating, where that point is on the surface of the Earth changes, and so that's why there, you know, there's a high tide every 12 hours. When, when one point is closer to the moon, when, one, when that same point is farther away, there's a low tide every 12 hours you know, as those points cycle uh, around the Earth excuse me, in their journey. Uh, how high and how low the tides are are affected by you know, local things like how you know, the shape of the sea floor and the land around it and things like that. Uh, so the highest tide doesn't necessarily occur precisely at the point closest to the moon. Uh, it could be slightly off, depending on local geography, because that has an influence as well. But that is why the tides <coughs> do occur. Uh, the last thing I want to mention here uh, is the idea of fine-tuning. Uh, fine-tuning is the idea that things on Earth are very well suited to life to human life, uh, and the argument is therefore that the Earth was designed for human life, uh, and things are fine-tuned for human life. Uh, and the gravitational force is uh, no different. I talked about this when I talked about the four fundamental forces back uh, last semester, but just again, if the gravitational force was somewhat stronger, well, then your, you know, your molecules and stuff couldn't hold together. And also, Earth wouldn't be precisely where it is related to the sun. I read one thing. I don't know how accurate this number is. Oh, I'm flipping the wrong direction. I, but I read from one source, I found a thing that said that if the value of G, so even if the, the force worked the same way, where it was masses times each other with the denominator of R squared, if G was different, by a factor of 1 over 10 to the 40th, and the sun wouldn't be able to exist because it wouldn't have formed the way it, you know, stayed together the way it, uh, it did. Uh, anyway, so, you know, I think the fine-tuning of the universe is a, a good argument for the existence of a, a creator. Uh, so for next time, this is your homework, and then we have a quiz.